Hello, I'm Adre Zita Garcia, a freshman visual communication and fine arts student at UP Diliman. This video is the final plate for my visual perception class under Sir Basil Maliksi, wherein I will be showing you the documentation of all artworks I did this first semester in this class. On the first week of the semester, Sir Basil instructed us to sketch three different objects that remind us of our experience during the COVID-19 pandemic. This diagnostic exercise has a twist. He gave us 10 minutes to feel our selected objects. I chose my cell phone, a bottle of alcohol, and two packs of medicine and vitamin. We will be sketching two sets of these objects. We have to sketch these objects from memory for the first set. Then for the second set, we will now be sketching the objects while actually staring at it in front of us. We are given 10 minutes to each set and another 5 minutes on note taking, reflecting to the exercise we just did. It is a nice introduction to how visual perception works in real life. For my first plate, we discussed about the cultural and psychological influences in perception. We are tasked to illustrate five artworks that infer how the development of writing helps in understanding. I got inspired of the different ancient writings, the man and the woman, cuneiform of Sumerians, and hieroglyph of Egyptians, and the human or man, Hanzi characters of Chinese. Simply because we humans are the creator of these texts and are used for our everyday communication, so I thought of these being the subjects. I illustrated these texts as if these were written in their corresponding medium, with their landscapes and the paintings of their everyday lives for the background. I drew everything with a 2B graphite pencil for the values, then I painted everything also with watercolor for the hue or color. I find this technique efficient if you're not really striving for realism, but this organic style, with its visible pencil and brush strokes. The second plate tackled the laws of gestalt, the principles of visual organization, rhythm, balance, scale, and contrast. We are tasked to look for found objects that we can use to visually imply these principles with our chosen theme. Mine was inspired from the stages of grief, anger, depression, bargaining, and acceptance. I utilized the objects that I have at home such as the carton sheets, colored papers, other fine art materials, and this red yarn that will connect these artworks. I wanted to illustrate an abstract representation of the feelings that we go through when grieving. The anger with red and dark colors, glued with rumpled red yarn that depicts someone is stirred up with their emotions due to anger. I use the continuity principle on this one because I will connect and will go through all the other artworks. The depression was composed of various shapes in cold and dark colors. I use the similarity principle to represent these clump of stressors that triggers the trauma brought by losing someone or something special. I made bargaining look like a shelf of books to illustrate that the person has now getting their thoughts together and organized. Using the proximity principle, the acceptance is where the red yarn gets absorbed into the center of this radial symmetric pattern to visually convey that the person has now come to their acceptance stage. But this is not where the grieving ends, because it doesn't end. It's like it's just been there hanging and scattered all over the surface. We may accept the grievance, but we can never forget. For the plate 3 and 4, we use this opportunity to prepare and plan the design of our float for this Lantern Parade 2022. Plate 3 was allotted to create our individual designs by sketching it and writing a few descriptions with it. This year's theme for the College of Fine Arts is Tagitab ng Pakikibaka, Alipato ng Bagong Pag-asa. The fourth plate is the finalized design of our float per committee. We designated committees such as the Costume Committee, Base Committee, Flower Committee, basically all the components that our float consists of. Just so you know, we went through a painstaking deliberations where we had multiple revisions of our class's design. As the block representative, it is a bittersweet feeling. I'm proud of my blockmates and I know that we did our best. I just felt like 
I made these layers of mistakes that heavily affected our production. I failed to recognize everyone's ideas from the start that could have ended to a different story. You know, a victory perhaps. <laughs> Maybe my expectations were just high. I'm very competitive. <laughs> competitive yarn. Despite these struggles and what ifs, I'm still grateful for everything. These mistakes redirected us to where we should be, where we would learn and grow. Starting from the blunt skills that we have to sharpen, the unprogressive attitude and ethics towards work that we have to unlearn, and the right spirit to fight against corruption and tyranny of the government, to demand justice for the oppressed and marginalized, always making us the better Filipino we were yesterday. Sigaw namin ay, Palay, hindi bala. Lupa para sa magsasaka, pagkain para sa masa. Hmm, Di ba? Ganun dapat. For my fifth plate, last plate na to. Gabay. Gabay yung title niya. A heart sculpture made from air dry clay and found objects with a white light and rainbow light on its bottom and on its background respectively. It was derived from my original acrylic painting, ang puso ang ating gabay. This concept was inspired from our babay lands, reconnecting to our cultural roots in a contemporary perspective. It opens the social issues surrounding the Filipino LGBTQIA community to be talked about and enlighten our countrymen so we could progress towards providing humanly justice to these problems. The materials used were mostly found and recycled objects from the previous holidays such as the wires, aluminum foils, cellophanes, and my iPad's keyboard folio box. Recycled. Air dry clay was also used mainly for building and reinforcing the heart and its base form. Lights were used to transform a space. Around motion sensing light was embedded into the base, illuminating the heart sculpture from below and a ring light tinted with colorful cellophanes in a rainbow pattern, diffused by a white lot in between. This is not my first time to scope, but it is for using our dry clay. First time ko yun. Kaya, um, I watched a few sculpting tutorials using our dry clay on YouTube, just for me to be aware of the common mistakes that I, a beginner like me, likely do. Ganun. I learned a lot from watching those videos and actually I've been thinking about creating this specific project as my personal artwork and fortunate enough this installation art came along and encouraged me to do it it's challenging but I like how it pushed me to learn it in a short period of time my work is not perfect but I think it turned out well in the end it just took me some extra time and effort to pull it off you know I hope that I will be given a chance to exhibit my Babaylan series. May mga susunod pa. Abangan. Stay tuned. Aside from my desire to build my brand and reputation, I want my art to convey stories reflecting my advocacies for the Filipino LGBTQIA plus community. Sana may tinda nila na ang puso nga talagang ating gabay. Maraming salamat po kung nakaabot kayo nito sa dulo. I know uh, mahaba siya kaya naglagay ako ng timestamps for you to you know, skip and I don't mind that yeah. but yeah I will be posting this online to all my social media accounts so I hope to everyone that will watch this kahit konti lang kayo I hope sana appreciate yung process kung paano ko ginagawa yung artworks ko and for sure I will be making more contents like these ayun lang, ito na muna for now Bye. Thank you.